project that um, I'm going to be talking about is um, it's actually a kind of a, a little um, spin-off or branch project from a, a bigger one that um, Leonie and I and um, Anne-Marie are involved in, which is the teen reading project. Um, and so I've, I've just called it for the purposes of this, you know, where are teenagers more, more and less likely to find books? So the bigger project um, is a ARC linkage, which includes um, all, these, all of these people. Um, and, uh, um, and we're partnering with um, the copyright agency, Australian Booksellers Association, um, Australian Publishers Association, School Libraries Association of Victoria, and um, the um, Australian Library and Information Association. Um, and the purpose of that project is to look at um, the, the cultural pathways that um, connect teenagers with books for leisure reading. So particularly with the books that they want to read. Um, so when it's, it's not, not particularly interested in um, the school curriculum or um, teenagers reading in a school setting, except if, you know, in that grey area where it is for recreational purposes or, or leisure purposes, but it's really about um, how, the, I guess, how they, whether and how they keep the love of reading alive. <clears throat> and so um, the um, mo mo most of the methods that we're using, um, so that you know, in the in the original design of the project, um, we agreed to do interviews with publishers, editors, sales representatives, and booksellers, which is the part of the project that we're just completing at the moment, um, and also with teachers and school librarians, which will happen when we move into the schools context. Um, as well as analysis of social media um, activity around young adult titles. So, um, you know, what young adult titles are being discussed on what forum, how are they discussed, um, how, you know, how does um, social media, how do influencers work to um, uh, put, not necessarily teenagers, because it's not necessarily teenagers reading young adult titles, but to put um, people in touch, readers in touch with young adult titles. Um, and we're um, just about to sort of start a series of focus groups with teenagers and then to do um, the with going through the sort of latter stages of a very complicated ethics um, process to survey teenagers in schools across four states and so the interviews with teachers and school li school librarians will happen in that context as well um, <clears throat> so that was that's the original design of the project but what we um, what we felt once we kind of reviewed that is that the information that's, um, there's a couple of limitations of it. Um, the information that's provided is largely self-reported. So it's teenagers saying what they, you know, what they read, how often they like to read that kind of thing. Publishers and, and booksellers and others um, talking about their relationship with teenage, te the teenage reader from their own perspective. Um, but there's very little on the, su the supply side. Um, sorry, sorry, there's very little, um, I guess, what you might call um, objective, data for want of a better word and um, and there's also very little that's focused on um, demand and and consumption it's all focused on supply so we started looking at I'm um, oh, sorry it's not focused on supply it's all focused on um, demand and consumption um, so we started looking at options for um, looking at uh, um, availability of, of books. Um, so a couple of options here. One was Nielsen BookScan data, which is the data that's collected for the book industry across uh, about, you know, the sale of books across the country. Um, the trouble with Nielsen BookScan data is that actually it's quite a blunt instrument. It doesn't, um, it, it doesn't break the data down at all. So it can tell you about, you know, um, it can rank all of the um, books by the, uh, by their sales, uh, but it won't, break it down according to region or um, or the type of bookseller or you know anything like that so uh, it, it's quite it's quite limited in that sense and also very expensive um, another option is looking at uh, libraries borrowing data um, and or, or their stocking so but um, we haven't actually found a way of doing that nationally there are we you know there are various kinds of ways that you can do it but but to be honest the sort of the way that libraries share information um, still happens in a very kind of regional way. It doesn't happen across the nation. So that's got limitations as well, although we haven't given up on that one. <clears throat> in fact, we haven't given up on Nielsen BookScan data either, but that's sort of a, a later sort of stage. So we, we, ha we had these questions, you know, that, that really kind of grew out of the project. Um, the first one was, um, where in Australia are teenagers more and less able to access books? Um, and putting aside ebooks and online booksellers for this purpose, for this purpose, and part of the reason for putting aside um, 
<coughs> ebooks and e online booksellers is that um, in the pilot study that we did in 2016, uh, and so, you know, bearing in mind that things can change over, over five years, um, but a very small proportion of um, teenagers used ebooks ebook readers um, and very few of them um, used online booksellers as well. So, um, <clears throat> so we were qu quite happy to sort of focus on where they could physically um, access books. So that was the first question. The second one, which is actually much more interesting to us, is where in Australia are teenagers more and less able to access advice about books? And this grew out of the fact that in the um, 2016 pilot survey, um, one of the big, the most significant reasons teenagers gave for not reading more was their difficulty in finding a good book. So in fact, that was the kind of genesis of the whole project really. And Leonie, I should say, you will interrupt me here when you have anything to contribute, won't you? I, I just, um, I, I should have said that at the beginning. Oh I'm yes, that... but you were doing such a great job. Yeah, right. Okay, butt in whenever you like. Um, but yeah, so um, we're in Australia, uh, teenagers more and less likely to access advice about books seem to us to be very important in that context. Um, so <clears throat> again, this is what we know from the um, pilot study and um, and uh, we, we've actually just done another focus group. We did another focus group in January with teenagers to ask about how they uh, access advice about books, um, uh, both books and advice about books. And so, and it was reinforced at that focus, that first focus group. So um, mostly teenagers will, will say that they um, they get their books through the school library. You know, the school, school libraries are absolutely fundamentally important to um, teenagers reading for leisure, there's no doubt about that. Probably competing with that, although it's not really a subject for the, the study that we're doing is family and friends, you know, a lot of teenagers, you know, many teenagers who, who continue to read for leisure um, will say that, you know, my mum knows what I like, you know, I, my, I read what my siblings have read, my cousin gave me this book, that kind of thing. We're less interested or less able to look at the non-institutional um, uh, ways that teenagers access books and advice, which partly reflects um, the interests of the uh, partners on this project, um, which is not to say it's not interesting, it's just not a, a major focus um, for the project. So school libraries um, and families and family and friends at the top, and then underneath that public libraries and um, a very uh, small number of um, teenagers uh, use independent and or chain bookstores themselves. I have included it there for a reason that I'll talk about next, um, but, uh, but you know, it, it's, it's quite rare that a teenager will report um, regularly going into a bookshop to look for books. <clears throat> so here are some examples. I just wanted to give some examples about the kinds of things that teenagers say when they're asked about how they access books and advice. So the first one is, you know, um, we do have a local library, but it's not much good. This was a student in regional Victoria, a teenager in regional Victoria, but our school library is good, you know, it has a good range. So that's where I go. Um, where, where they do talk about um, bookshops, they often comment on, you know, going quite rarely, you know, that they tend to be very expensive or um, this one down the bottom. I go to a bookshop when I have that book vouchers or to spend or birthday gifts. So it's, it's kind of, it's much more rare. Um, but I did also want to just include a um, quote from a bookseller because, you know, book, booksellers, you know, they, it is a very important part of their job that they um, they advise readers. It's just that the readers that they um, get to see are a very small proportion of the population. So it, it is people who already have a, re you know, do have a kind of a, a strong reading habit um, and, um, you know, let alone um, a disposable income to spend on books. But that is a very important part, particularly um, independent bookstores and particularly in smaller communities do see it as a very important part and they do talk quite a lot about the strategies they use for working with teenagers. <clears throat> so um, the mapping exercise, which was something that um, uh, Leone and our research fellow Bronwyn Redden and I cooked up, was um, to look at where um, you know, where we might find the institutions that put teenagers in touch with books for leisure um, across Australia. So the first question was, where in, where in Australia are teenagers more and less likely to access books? Um, and so, and, and, break, and we wanted to break that down by um, independent, chain, um, independent and chain stores and department stores. Um, <clears throat> and the reason for that breakdown is that, um, you know, in, in order, you know, independent bookstores are much more likely, well, actually this comes, sorry, this comes to the second question, so I'll come back to that. And then second, the second part was, um, where are their libraries, both um, public and school libraries? 
Um, <clears throat> I think I might say this later on, but uh, just in case. Um, so uh, there's obviously a big difference in the, the quality of different school libraries. Um, you know, most most primary school, sorry, most secondary schools will have a school library, but um, at least on paper. But sometimes that might be a storeroom. So really, what we decided to do was to look at the the school libraries that had teacher librarians um, as a way of uh, you know looking at the extent to which they were actually kind of caring for and updating the collection of books rather than um, being a library in name only. The second part was to look at um, access to advice. And as I said, this is the more important part as far as we're concerned. So, um, and because, um, because independent bookstores are in a much better position to be able to advise teenagers about reading material, we wanted to look at where there are independent bookstores, um, where there are school libraries with teacher librarians again, and where are their public libraries. Um, and, um, you can see that this is, you know, actually in reverse of the, the pyramid that I showed you earlier. So um, school libraries are the most important part, but the way that these are presented, we're looking at bookshops first. Um, and the reason for that, there are a couple of reasons for that. One is that um, that's where the project started. We started by looking at the supply. So publishers, um, sales representatives, booksellers, etc. cetera. Um, so it, it was very much on our minds. Um, this, uh, the second reason is that actually it's easier um, because there's fewer of them. Um, mapping public libraries and um, school libraries is a much bigger project. So we thought we'd test it with a smaller sample first and then um, expand it. Um, and so uh, the part that we haven't done is, oh, sorry, we actually haven't done number two here. We haven't yet looked at school uh, at libraries. We've, we've concentrated on bookshops um, and we certainly haven't done part three, which is to look at how um, the concentration of uh, different institutions that um, teenagers can access for both advice and books themselves um, maps across the concentration of young populations in Australia. So that's the next very exciting part. So I'm just going to unshare this and now and um, share.